In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove broken spark plugs from an engine without taking it apart. Here working on the F-250 again and broke, it's not my fault, but still broke two spark plugs off in the engine. Fortunately for me, I have decent access here through the fender well. You can see one of them was in this hole. I got it out. One of them was in the other hole. But I want to show you what happened, the tools I have used to fix it, and tell you what worked and what didn't work. So to start, here's one of the old spark plugs that came out that didn't break. You can see these things have been in there for a while. And the way they work is you tighten these threads down and these threads pull this little chamfer up against the side of the head and that's what holds pressure. Well, what happened on two of my eight was that. This right here is the little nut and the nut broke off the body. So the first thing I had to do, this body was filled with porcelain. And that's a big problem. So the first thing I did was I took the handy dandy shop vac and made this little field modification. That's, uh, I don't know, I think that's like 3 8 fuel line or something I had laying around. And between a careful application of shop vac and a couple of broken picks, uh, I managed to break up all the porcelain down in there and get it out. What you want to do when you're doing that is take the shop vac, adapt it down to a small piece of hose somehow. I use black tape. But come in here, and while you are chipping and banging and beating and doing all that, put your hose right just as close to that spark plug as you can get because you don't want, you want to keep as much out of the cylinder as you can. If you're lucky, like I was, toward the, toward the end on one of the plugs, I got a mess in the floor. Here it is. Uh, it actually, the vacuum pulled out the porcelain as one piece. So that was pretty handy. So once I got the porcelain out, I, had, I was left with this. This is the steel body of the plug and it was just seized down in there. So the first thing I did was I took good penetrating oil. Don't use WD-40. Uh, it's not meant for this. This is Aerocroil by Kano Labs. This stuff is undoubtedly one of the best penetrating oils on the market. So spray these sleeves and walk away. Come back two or three hours later, spray them again and walk away. Repeat that. I did that for over a day. Let's get a flashlight there so we can see a little bit better. So after I sprayed them, the, first, the next thing I did was I got, oh, I don't even know if I've got one in here anymore. I don't think I do. Uh, I got a typical spiral style extractor, what they call an easy out. And those things work well in a lot of situations, but part of the problem with them is when you're turning it to remove the broken bolt or spark plug it's actually tightening itself in and it gets wider so it's increasing pressure on the stuck fastener as you're turning it uh, the easy out it went in it went really really hard and i just got the feeling that it was going to break so i took it out and backed off and sprayed it with more croil and walked away again uh, then comes today, this afternoon, uh, I'll show you what finally worked to get the back one out, and then I'll let you watch me work on this front one here. First thing I did, well, this morning, uh, I came out here and sprayed it with the coral again. Then this afternoon, I came out here, and because my little propane torch is so much easier to maneuver... I stuck my little propane torch in here and just heated away and it didn't do any good at all. Propane, or at least these, the cheap little torches like I have, just do not get hot enough to make any kind of a difference. So propane didn't work, didn't help. So the next thing I tried to do was to freeze the bolt. Now what we're doing with this heating and freezing and stuff is metal expands and contracts as the temperature changes and when you heat it everything expands and then everything contracts when you freeze it you can just make it contract 
So, uh, you need something extremely cold to freeze it. Well, it doesn't get much colder than R134A. This is a cheap $4.88 can of refrigerant. Uh, you can buy it at Walmart or the dollar store or pretty much everywhere. And then this on top is a modified fill connector. And by modified, I mean I cut the damn thing off. Screw your thing down on the can. Don't tighten that valve until you're ready. Leave it open. But once you're ready, you'll take your, your dealio there. Tighten this valve. And as you're tightening this valve, it's going to puncture the can and open it. And refrigerant's going to start coming out. But if you turn the valve tighter, it'll actually close it off like it is now. And what you want to do after that is turn your can over. And I'll actually set the camera down. So, whoa, getting a little wacky. Set the camera down. Well, not really where I want it, but whatever. Turn your can upside down and crack the valve. See that spurting out of there? That is not water. That is, you know, I don't know how cold it is, but it's really damn cold refrigerant. So I came in here and I froze both of those spark plugs with that refrigerant. I mean, you could literally see frost on them. So I let that sit for a few minutes, hit it with the croil again while it was still cold, because my thought was if the spark plug has contracted even uh, the tiniest bit, that's going to give that oil a little more room to get in there and work. So I did that, let it sit for a while, and that did not help at all. So I got out the big guns and I came down here and I grabbed the torch and you've got to be extremely careful doing this for a number of reasons. One, uh, there's a lot of stuff in here that can catch on fire, especially, you know, when we're talking about these 20 year old trucks like mine is and like yours may be if you're watching this video. Uh, you know, there's oil leaks, there's old grease, there's penetrating oil where you've been trying to get them out already. So be very cautious of that. The other thing you need to be careful of if you're using, maybe even if you're not using one, but if you're using a cutting torch or a cutting head like this instead of a rosebud, uh, we'll go back to my little broken piece. Where would my little broken piece go? Crap. I was going to demonstrate with that too. Okay, well, you all saw it. So we go back to my little broken piece, and this portion of the plug, this really rusty part right here between the nut and the chamfer there, that's extremely thin. I mean, you can see on this nut, that shiny portion around the edge, that's how thick that wall is. And when that starts getting hot, even if you're not hitting the oxygen lever, even if you're not intentionally trying to cut, uh, it's going to get hot enough and that metal is going to be thin enough that that metal is going to start melting and flowing out of the way. And you want to be really, really careful about that. Because you do not want that hot metal flowing through the hole in that spark plug and getting into your cylinder. That will that'll wreck a cylinder, that'll wreck a piston, that'll wreck a lot of stuff. So be very careful. So I heated it up with the acetylene torch. Grabbed the extractors, tried those again, and nothing. Did not work at all. The extractor would go in, it would get hard, and then it would feel like it was about to break. So I pulled the extractors out again and decided to go for broke. And when I say go for broke, I took the torch, and then I took the refrigerant, and I put the two together. Now, don't do this. This is a terrible idea. Uh, it's probably unsafe. It's probably unhealthy. They make these cans of freeze-off stuff that you can buy that does the same thing as I'm doing with this can of refrigerant. Uh, you can use that. You can buy those little air dusters like you use for cleaning a computer keyboard. You can use those. This is, uh, this works, but it's really not a great idea. So don't do this. Don't do what I'm about to describe. But anyway, I took the torch here, came in here, and heated that thing as much as I was 
brave enough to. I, at, at that point, I had already decided, worst case scenario, I'm going to have to buy heads for this truck. I've got to pull the engine pretty soon anyway for some oil leak. So if I had to put a head in it, um, you know, you can get junkyard heads for about 30, 40 bucks at the right, right yards. So I came in here and just didn't really, I, I wanted it to work, but if it didn't, okay. So I came in here with the torch and I heated that thing just as hot as I was brave enough to, you know, right to the point that it would start to melt and run down in the cylinder. I mean, I, I took it about as far as I could go. And then I backed off and waited for, I don't know, maybe 30, 45 seconds till it wasn't glowing as insanely hot anymore. You know, it darkened off a shade or two. And then I hit that super hot bolt with this super cold freezing refrigerant liquid. And what happened was that extreme temperature change from insanely hot to insanely cold, found it, was just enough to collapse this. I mean, I mean it's undetectable. It, it might not even have been a thousandth of an inch. But I heated it, then I immediately froze it, and then once it was as cold as it looked like it was going to get, it was frosting over, I hit it with the croil again and walked away for probably 15 minutes, came back, drove the extractor into it, because I got a different style of extractor. These are not the traditional screw kind. These are like a tapered wedge extractor, and these are cheap, crappy ones I bought at O'Reilly's. O'Reilly's may sell some good ones, but these aren't that hot. But the way they work is instead of tightening into the stuck fastener and expanding it, they bite with these little edges. You drive them in, they bite with the edges, and you can turn them out that way. Which brings us to now. I heated and froze, I got the rear plug out, I heated and froze the front plug, and I drove the extractor into it. I sprayed it with oil probably, at this point, probably half an hour ago, and walked away. And now I'm about to put a ratchet and a socket on it, and we're gonna see if we're gonna get lucky on the front plug. So let's reposition here. Okay. I got it set up. You can't exactly see the whole plug, but you can see the uh, the extractor and you can see where I'm going to be working. So, hit it with a little more oil just because that can't hurt. Cross your fingers. I'm using a 12 point socket on the back of this extractor. And that one's the wrong size. But I'm using a 12-point socket because a 6-point socket doesn't grab the four uh, corners very well. So, there we go. Look at that. Whoopsie. Getting tight. There we go. Both broken plugs came out. Hallelujah, I'm not buying a head yet. Now next thing we're gonna do is take our little uh, spark plug threader. This one's made by Lyle. I grabbed it at O'Reilly's too. It's double-sided, it's 14 millimeters on the left. I think that's 18 millimeters on the right. 
We're using the 14 mil side on this one. Uh, I've already oiled the extractor. I've oiled the plug hole. And I'm just going to gently come in here and clean this up as best I can. On the other side, uh, I did not need a socket, or on the other plug, I should say, I did not need a socket to run this in or out. The threads were actually pretty clean. It was that chamfer right at the end of the plug that was causing all our problems. And that bottomed out just like it should. So we'll run it back out and talk about the next thing we're gonna do because this is not done. Okay, now that our plugs are out, we've gotta clean these cylinders before we put new plugs in because during the removal process, especially banging on the porcelain, even with the vacuum, there's a chance some of it got down in there and that'll wreck a cylinder in a hurry. So here's what we're gonna do to clean that up. First is an extendable magnet. You know, a little cheap little magnet you can get at the parts store. And I'm gonna do a better job of this later. This is just to illustrate what you're after. But you'll take your magnet, stick it down in the cylinder, and run it around just to get, see that? Just to get any particles of stuff. You can see if it'll focus here, all that's black oily rust flakes. So we're gonna use our magnet to get all the big stuff. And you know, it's, it's gonna take a few minutes for me to do that. I'm not gonna bore you with all that. But once we use our magnet and get all the big stuff, take your vacuum, and depending on what size hose you have, this hose is too big to fit through my plug hole. So I'm gonna adapt it down again to a smaller piece of hose. Um, I'm sure I got some floating around somewhere but use a smaller piece of hose, go in through the spark plug hole, and vacuum the cylinder out. Not gonna hurt a thing in the world to do that. And then, with those two plugs out, come over here, pull the coil wire off, and turn the engine over a couple of times with the plugs out, and let it blow anything else that may be in there out through the spark plug hole. Some of that stuff theoretically could go out through the exhaust valve, but better if it doesn't. So there's two extracted plugs. There's two broken plugs. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more truck tech information, be sure to subscribe and I'll put a link uh, right here at the end of the video somewhere to the the other truck stuff I've got on this channel. If you found this video useful, please hit like. If you have any comments, questions, anything like that, be sure to uh, put them in down there below, down in the comment section. And thanks for watching.